Hi everyone, bonjour à tous. In this video, I would love to share with you 20 ideas, concepts and technical tips and tricks to help you improve the quality of your garments as well as your sewing skills. Also, I highly recommend you to stay until the end of this video to discover a bonus advice, my favorite, the one that summarizes them all and that sums up in a way the philosophy under the guideline of this YouTube channel. And please make sure to leave your own advices and ideas in the comments so that we could all benefit from them. Let's get started. Take your time and learn to be patient. I have no wish to be an apologist for slowness, but rather for quality over quantity. And this has to be done by always being thorough, meticulous and rigorous, which requires time, especially as a beginner. This is to be accepted and even appreciated. So have patience and practice indulging in the time spent with your work and with yourself. Keep your space neat and tidy at all times. Fold your fabrics with care and put them away as well as your half-started projects. Keep only with you the garment you are working on at this very moment so as to be able to devote yourself to it peacefully. Your mind will finally have the necessary space and lightness it requires to work properly, efficiently, with passion and without unnecessary distractions. So avoid scattering your things and your thoughts around. Practice makes perfect. And I may add, regular practice makes perfect. You will learn the proper movements and postures and gain experience. Sewing is an art, but it is a craft as well, which requires skills and some savoir-faire. So let's practice to acquire it. Ask for help. If you have an issue with your garment, don't lose heart and don't give up either. We live in a wonderfully rich time with everything at our fingertips, including the right tools to improve in any given discipline. Books, online classes, tutorials, social medias and so on. Whatever question you may have, somebody will have the answer for you. Sewing is passed orally and visually. It's a shared experience and the online craft and sewing community is one of the nicest there is. Be curious. Your own wardrobe is full of clothing pieces. Have a look at them. Notice how they are made inside and outside. Don't hesitate to unstitch a garment that intrigues you and have a closer study at how the different pieces lay flat on a table and how they were attached together. You can also go in your favorite stores and get inspired by what you see. Examine closely the seams, the construction lines, the placement of the darts and so on. Read the instructions manual of your machine. Of your sewing machine, of course, but also your serger if you are lucky enough to have one. What are the different stitches available? What are they made for? How and when to use them? Learn also how to adjust the thread tension and how to take care of your machines. These details matter, they add up and they enrich your skills. Become your iron's best friend. What am I saying? Develop a closely bonded, quasi unhealthy relationship with your iron. Teach yourself how to properly use it and how to set the correct heat. Use a Jeannette, that's a sleeve board for details. Use a tailor's ham for curvy places. Have a dedicated cotton fabric for pressing delicate fabrics. This advice may seem simplistic, but it is quite often ignored. Press and or iron your garment at every step of its construction and you'll be amazed at the result it produces. Don't be scared to make a muslin. Yes, it takes time. And yes, you'll be proud and relieved you made the effort because it really is necessary for complex designs and to spare delicate fabrics. Take the time to fit your muslin to perfection and check whether the drape is to your liking. What a pleasure it will be then to cut in the delightful silk of the wedding dress or in a beautiful linen of the saffron jacket, knowing in advance that the result will be impeccable. Use thread tracing. This advice is not making me so popular amongst people who want everything and right away. 
And I understand why, since thread tracing might not be so necessary for basic garments. However, the purpose of this video is to encourage you to push back your limits and improve your technical skills. I sincerely think that sewing the quick and dirty way works if you have practiced for a while, but not if you are a beginner wishing to learn and progress. So, for complex designs and especially for clothing, thread trace your pieces. Use a thread and a needle to also mark every important details such as the middle front and middle back lines, the hip line, the placement of your pockets, the hemline, the neckline and so on. These tracings will be visible on both sides of the fabric, which will make fittings and alterations so much easier. Baste, unpin, unpin and baste. Be very generous when pinning before sewing. And when it is required, especially to construct a garment, baste with a thread. Use a color code and choose very bright and contrasting colors. This way it won't be a hassle to unstitch what needs to be without confusing the different tracings and you won't cut your fabric either. Basting is never a waste of time. Never, ever. But what a bother and a waste of time to unstitch a zipper hastily sewn to a dress just for the sake of saving three additional minutes. And what about unstitching a whole ill-fitted garment that one decided not to baste nor to fit properly? Isn't that the real waste of time? Without taking into account the frustration and the discouragement. So now a little tip to remove quickly your basting. Don't make a knot at the end and the beginning. A few large back stitches will do to maintain the basting. And then, when you stitch your garment with the sewing machine, try as much as possible to stitch at about half a millimeter on one side of the basting. This way, the thread won't be caught in your seams. Use longer zippers. And by that I mean use zippers longer than the opening you wish to create or longer than the suggested length noted in the instructions if you are working with the commercial pattern. The little extra room will make them so much easier to insert. And on that matter, I highly recommend you spend half a day overcoming your fears and exorcising them once and for all. Inserting a zipper is not complicated, you just need to learn how and learn which presser foot of your machine needs to be used for an optimal outcome. Useless gadgets versus useful tools. Because I mentioned presser fit to insert your zippers, I'd like to touch here on the matter of sewing accessories. For sure there are plenty of useless widgets and things that are not worth your money but you should invest in a few extremely useful tools and attachments that will make your life sweeter. Top stitching, making bias, turning loops inside out. This task can feel like painful chores. However, with the right tool, they become almost pleasurable. So don't be afraid of technology and try to stay up to date on the matter for the sake of pleasure and well done work. Use weights. Speaking of sewing supplies, I'd like to dwell a little bit on weights. Not on their design, nor their size or shape, as I believe on the matter that any heavy object will do nicely. They are obviously quite useful to maintain a pattern piece in place on top of your fabric or to prevent a fabric to slide on the floor when cutting extra large yardage. But they also come in very handy and it is a little less known, I believe, to hold and stretch your fabric while hand sewing. Try it next time and you'll see how much it helps. By the way, it is possible to do the same by pinning your fabric to your trousers or to your table if it is covered with a padded undercloth. But make sure that the fabric isn't too delicate and if it is, use a weight. Try your hand at hand sewing. I mean, train your hand to hand sew. It is quite pleasurable and pretty useful. Your machine will not be able to access specific spots and won't be able to achieve some details and special tasks for you. This is very true if you do a lot of alterations and transformations to existing clothes. 
but also if you're working with high-end couture fabrics that require handmade finishes. In the world of haute couture, most of the finishes are made by hand, even though a machine could perform some of them, and the result is far more polished and refined. I don't see why we couldn't aim for the same elegance. Think about linings. Nowadays, we rarely, if ever, wear underdresses. On top of that, clothes from high street fashion are less and less lined. It is a styling effect for sure, but it also roots in cutting production costs such as time, competency and raw material. Yet, lining garments has a double benefit. The main fabric will look more elegant and so will your own silhouette. The lining will change the quality of the main fabric by giving it a better draping effect, by adding some weight and support, and therefore by giving the illusion of a higher fabric quality and finish. As for our figure, they look more harmonious and nicely shaped, and unsightly physical details are less visible. So when possible, and when the garment calls for it, consider adding a lining. Little round about finishes. What makes a garment professional looking? The shape? The fit? The drape? The fabric? Yes, all of the above, but also the quality of the finishes. They do indeed make a tremendous difference. They divide the bad, the good and the great. I am convinced that we can be a hobbyist or a sewing enthusiast and still achieve finishes worthy of the haute couture world if one makes the effort. Some finishes can be made by hand or with a sewing machine or a serger. In any case, they must be neat, meticulous, varied and adapted to the chosen fabric as well as the situation. So aim for perfection and never give up trying. Then you won't blush if by accident you were to wear your newly made dress on the wrong side. Trim excess fabric and reduce extra bulkiness. If you want your garment to have a beautiful fit and drape and to be as flat, smooth and sleek as possible, get rid of internal bulk as much as possible. Make notches, frankly trim off excess fabric or both. You can either and of course that's always taking into account the fabric you're working with, trim the seam allowance as close as 3 to 4 mm from the seam. You can also grade and trim intersections and enclosed details that have several layers of fabric. Cuffs, collars, waistbands, or really any places you feel might need it. Grading here means cutting the excess fabric off your seam allowances to different widths. I should make a dedicated tutorial on the matter, it is a brilliant tool to learn. Top stitching, edge stitching and under stitching. If you haven't yet, it's time to make use of these techniques as they are of the utmost importance to enhance the quality of your work. Not that they are complex in any way, they just tend to be overlooked, forgotten or feared by beginners. I can assure you that they are quite straightforward. So quickly, as this is not the place for a tutorial, under stitching maintains in place a lining or a facing inside a garment. The sewing isn't apparent from the outside. Top stitching and edge stitching hold several layers of fabric together in place, like seam allowances, hems, collars, and they are made by a row or several rows of stitching that you can see from the outside, so it is both practical and aesthetical. The difference between top stitching and edge stitching is just how far you place your row of stitches from the actual seam. This distance should be decided according to the fabric and the desired effect. Work on delicate details a section at a time. Delicate places need focus and attention. Don't hesitate to start on one tricky bit, taking care of this little section first, making sure it is perfect before moving to the next. For instance, darts, alignment between the top and the bottom of the garment, corners, intersections, bias details and so on. Pin, baste and sew the heart section first and if you are happy, move on to sewing the whole seam. 
challenge accepted. <laughs> this is self-explanatory really, so don't be scared and move out your comfort zone already. Gradually raise your standards under the difficulty of your project. It is the best way to improve. And finally, as promised, my favorite advice, the one that summarizes them all and that sums up in a way the philosophy and the guideline of this YouTube channel. Cultivate the love and pride of the job well done. You will see how gradually your eye becomes accustomed to the beauty of a well-made garment and your heart to the pleasure and satisfaction it entails. Don't ever settle for mostly good, but always aim to do the best you believe you can do, and then more. And before I leave you in peace, I would love to read for you a few verses from the French poet Nicolas Boileau, whose wisdom you might recognize. Hâtez-vous lentement et sans perdre courage. Vingt fois sur le métier, remettez votre ouvrage, polissez-le sans cesse et le repolissez. Ajoutez quelquefois et souvent effacez. Bye bye. À bientôt.